Hey guys, welcome back to Pete's Garage. And now it's time we talk about fuel injection. Whether you are working on your vehicle's current fuel injection system, uh, you're trying to upgrade your fuel injection system, or you want to add fuel injection replacing the carburetor, going with fuel injection, there are some benefits and things to watch out for, how to choose an injector, what size injector do you need, how much fuel do you need, how much fuel pressure, there's all things, uh, all kinds of things that you need to know to make sure you make the system successful. So let's start by looking at a simple fuel injection system on an everyday car. We'll go over some numbers and then we'll install the fuel injection system on this engine. Before we go out and look at the, the vehicle itself and how to work on your fuel injection system, let's take a, ba a look at the basic components of the fuel injection system on the engine. Of course you're going to have your fuel rail and this fuel rail is mounted in the engine so it would be mounted, bolted into the engine. Uh, these tabs here are where the fuel rail is screwed down to the block or to the cylinder head and this has to be held in place because as the pressure comes in and builds up this would want to blow out so the, the fuel rail itself has to be held in place. So our basic components are the fuel rail right here, okay, this is where the fuel comes in and I'll show you how to disconnect those fuel lines if you're having trouble with it. Uh, most fuel rails that you get with your car are going to have this little uh, looks like an inflator valve like on your on your um, wheel but this is where you bleed off the pressure from your fuel system because the fuel system will be pressurized can be up to 50 60 psi and if you unbolt your fuel injector or fuel um, bolt your fuel rail when you take it off it'll, it could blow off and you'll have gas all over the place which is obviously not what you want to do so we have our fuel rail which goes to each injector and this is a four cylinder engine so there's four injectors and each injector has the wiring harness on it and if you're going to work on these uh, th these are very simple to operate the the uh, locks on these is very simple most of these locks work the same way on a fuel injector you just push up on the lock and when you push down on the tab at the top it comes right off the fuel injector so it's not very difficult to get off when you put it back on it's as simple as just pushing it on and making sure this lock is in place. You don't want to leave this with that lock up. You want to make sure the lock is in place. Sometimes it's a slide lock, sometimes it's a clip, but there'll be some kind of lock to hold the wiring harness onto the injector itself, okay? And the injectors, depending on the fuel system, will have these little clips. These little clips are easy to take off. You would just put a screwdriver in there and just pull it. That'll come off and the injector will come right out. So I actually have the vehicle that this, this uh, fuel system goes in, the fuel rail, the injector, the whole harness. Let's go take a look at it, and if you're working on your fuel injection system, I'll show you some things that you want to look out for when you're working on your fuel injection system in the car. Now if you need to work on your fuel injection system in your vehicle, it's pretty simple. Once you're going to move the vanity cover off the top of the engine, sit it out of the way, and that's going to expose your whole fuel system. You have your fuel supply line coming here, and I'll show you how to get this off of here, because if you don't know how to do it, it'll drive you nuts. And here's your fuel rail. The fuel rail comes in, it covers up the injectors. We've got our bleed screw right here, and here's the wiring harness that goes to all the injectors underneath. If you were to unbolt that and take it off, you pull the whole injection harness right off. And this is sitting in here just like this. So you would pull that right off and you'd have your whole fuel rail harness, fuel rail and harness. So I'm going to assume that you don't have all of the right tools to do a job like this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bleed off the pressure in the fuel system if we're going to work on this. And assuming that you don't have the right tools you're going to use with what you have. And what you probably have is just a screwdriver. So I'm going to take off my cap here. And this is something you can depress with a screwdriver but you just don't want to press it because it's under pressure and this will come shooting out. So Again, you got to have something, so if you just take a piece of towel, put it over it, and when you push this down, you see the fuel come out? I'm trying to bleed off the pressure inside the fuel system. And I want to capture the fuel so it doesn't go on the engine, but if the engine's hot, and you have gas, and you get hot gas, and the gas gets on the uh, exhaust manifold around the engine that's hot, you don't want to start a fire. So I'm bleeding off the pressure, and I just have this paper towel here to collect the fuel. And as you can see, after I finished bleeding off the pressure, the, uh, the towel is pretty soaked. So there's a lot of gas that's going to come out just from the pressure that's in the, uh, in the fuel system itself. So now I'm pushing it down. I'm pretty happy that I have the, um, the pressure's blood off pretty good. So I'll put the cap back on. 
Now I'm positive that there's no pressure in my fuel system and I can work on it safely. Now let's take off that fuel line. All right. Before I take this fuel rail and I take this fuel line off the fuel rail, I want to I want to share with you something with you that's really interesting. If you want to know if a car company is having quality problems with a vehicle, you can tell by opening up the engine compartment. And what you're looking for are things like this. See this little red paint dot on the edge here? That red paint dot, this green dot on, on this uh, vacuum motor right here. We have a pink dot on a hose right here. Uh, we have a yellow dot right here on this connector right here. This, this hose right here, this hose has three. It has a green, a pink, and an orange. Looks like green, pink, orange. All those right there. There's this connector right down here. It's got a pink swipe on it, like a pink marker. It's like that. All of these marks on the engine are where somebody was sitting on the assembly line and they were sitting there checking. So let's take this for example. This person was probably sitting on the assembly line and was told to make sure this connector was down and it was locked and put a line on there so we know it was checked. All of these dots mean something, including the ones like you see up on valve covers like this. That pink dot was put there by somebody by hand with a pink dauber, and that person was probably doing something like checking to make sure the wiring harness is all there, making sure it's all, it, it, all the connectors are on, and when it's done, you put a paint dot on there to say you checked it. So every pink dot, or every paint dot, represents a quality check that somebody was doing on the assembly line and they were doing it on the assembly line because it got to the assembly plant where they were putting the engine in and it was wrong and they call the engine plant and say hey we're getting engines without this wiring harness connected we're getting engines without the wire connected or something connected so what they do is the engine the engine plant will sit someone on the assembly line and say you sit here check every one of those and after you're done put a paint dot on there that's what all the paint dots so if you open up a hood of an engine like i have here a hood of a car and you look at the engine and you have paint dots all over the place they're having quality problems at the assembly plant that's what those mean so now let's take off this fuel line and they're pretty common and remember your fuel line might be under pressure so you want to have some towels handy and I'll put some towels here just in case like that in case there's some excess fuel pressure in there and the thing to remember is that these clips on here are fairly sharp they're made out of stainless steel and sometimes these corners here can be really sharp and if you go to pull it off and you slip you're gonna put a nice gash in your finger they're really easy to take off most of you just you just put a screwdriver and just pry it off of the off of the fuel line and just slide it out from underneath how it hooks in there it just hooks in and goes on so you just take that off and now I'm going to want to take this fuel line off now if you just try and pull this off it's going to drive you crazy if you don't have the right tool because it's never going to come off the reason it's not going to come off is because this fuel line is sitting on here and there's a spring inside here that goes around here and it crimps around this part of the fuel line and you'll never get it off so you need the right tool if you go to AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts or some big box auto store, you're going to find you can buy a set of tools like this. These are just cheap plastic parts, and they're only like, I think I this maybe five bucks. I think I bought a long time ago, but five, under, under five, six bucks, you're going to get this. And this is designed to take these kind of spring connectors off of crimped fuel lines, crimped hydraulic lines, and they're all different sizes. So I'm just going to look at this, and I'm going to estimate the size of the line I got, which is this one right here. I'm going to take it off and this is how easy this is now remember you might have some excess pressure in your line so be aware of that you want to be careful that's why I have these uh, ho these uh, paper towels here but I'm gonna leave them off so you can see so you slide this up and you can see this is tapered this is tapered because what this is going to do is this is going to go in there and it's going to push the spring out away from that crimp okay so you take this you push this in and then you lift it in like that see how it went in there now I can come in here and lift up on my fuel line and it comes right off. So if you see the tool, see how that tool does? That tool pushes the spring up and allows you to take it off of the off of the fuel rail. And you just take your tool off. Now I have my fuel line off. You can see there's a little fuel that came out of there and you want to make sure that it's not under pressure. So now I have my fuel line off. That's how you take it off. If you look inside the fuel line, this one doesn't have springs but it actually has bent uh, connectors there and that sort of hook into that. So that's how this one works and it's a little different than the spring. And to put it back on, all you do is put it there and push it, make sure it clicks on, and it stays there. Then you take your connector, slide it underneath, just line it up, clip it on. That's how you put it on. Now, let's go back in the shop, we'll look at the fuel rails, we'll look at the fuel injectors, different size of fuel injectors, how to choose your fuel injectors, and how to install them.
Now the first thing we'll talk about as we look at the fuel injectors and choosing what size fuel injector is best for our engine. There's different types of fuel injection. First we have TBI or what's known as throttle body injection that's also known as single point injection because this is a, a point where the injector is right underneath the throttle body and it injects just like a carburetor would. It's one point. The fuel goes up to the carburetor or the throttle body. It has one injector that shoots it into the throttle body and then the air gets mixed and it gets distributed throughout the entire uh, plenum. Then it goes to the or the intake manifold, and then it goes to the each cylinder. Then we have MPFI, multi-point fuel injection. It's sometimes called port, but it's actually multi-point fuel injection. And this is, uh, when you go to something like this, this, this fuel rail could be a multi-point fuel injection. The difference is, the, uh, this being the, the injector would be at the throttle body, and this is the fuel rail like we just looked in the car. So the difference when you have a, a multi-point fuel injection or port injection is that these would fire in banks. So these would fire, or let's say these two would fire, then these two would fire. They fire in banks. They improve, the improvement on that is go to SFI, sequential fuel injection. Sequential injection is that each injector fires for each cylinder when it's taking in for its time with the spark plugs. So the firing order might be like bang, 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 bang. It might fire like this. So the injector fires when it's needed instead of two firing at once. So you get more and more precise uh, timing of the fuel with the air into the cylinder as it's needed with the spark plug. And then the last one we have direct injection which is most common in, in today's engines. This is where the fuel rail and the injector is put and it's right into the cylinder head, right into the cylinder. It, it dumps right in the cylinder. It does, the fuel doesn't have to go past the valve. It's right into the cylinder, right into the chamber, so it doesn't have to go past the intake valve, so you save more efficiency there. Better emissions, better burning of the fuel, better air mixture, all that kind of stuff. So, I talked about uh, the fuel injectors, and I'll talk a little bit more about why this is a deadhead uh, rail as we talked, as I mentioned before. But I'm going to take this clip off. Like I said, it's, they're pretty easy to take off. Take this clip off, and I'm going to pull my fuel injector out. Pull out of the fuel rail, like that, I'll just put this down. So this is here is our fuel injector, and it's a fairly simple device. It's just an electric device. The, electric, the harness is here. There's a magnet in there, and when the power comes on, it opens up the valve and allows pressure to go through here, through the, through the injector, and it sprays through these nozzles, and it sprays into the cylinder. So that's what an injector looks like. This is just a standard injector you'd find in any four-cylinder common uh, engine today. Um, these are like 28 bucks. They're pretty cheap. So if you have to replace your fuel injectors, you have a bad injector, you can buy one and replace it fairly cheap, following the process I just showed you. Now when you get a little higher performance and you need more performance out of injector, you get an injector like this. This is an Excel injector, and it's designed, for, obviously you can see the difference in size, right? The diameter is bigger, so it's going to have more power, and it's going to be able to hand, handle a higher fuel flow. This is, this is the kind of injector we're going to be installing today on the engine that I'm building. So before I go and get into that, if you are upgrading your engine, and you are upgrading your uh, fuel system, and you need a better injector, and you say, well, how big of an injector should I get? What's overkill? What's the right injector for my engine? Let me show you how to figure out what injector you really need for the application you're trying to build now. So these are the steps you're going to want to do or want to go through when you're trying to determine what fuel injector is right for the modifications you need or your upgrade or the engine you're building. First you want to determine your horsepower and for this I, my target was 500 with this engine so I used 500 of the baseline but you can estimate your engine. If it's a 350 you might have 280 horsepower or 300 just look up what the recommended or what the uh, standard horsepower is for the engine you're putting these in, or estimate. It, it, the engine got 210 horsepower, I put some upgrades, I'm anticipating a 30, ho 30 horsepower increase, so I'm going to shoot for 245. But determine what your horsepower is. Next you want to determine approximately your brake specific fuel consumption. Now the brake specific fuel consumption, BSFC, that's the amount of fuel consumed per unit of power produced. And I know that's a lot to, to say, but it's, you can determine this through, through dyno testing, estimate this figure through these numbers here. So what I'm going to do is estimate it for you. If you have a high compression engine, high compression being higher than 10 to 1, up to maybe 12 or 13 to 1, 
if you don't have any modifications on this engine, you're going to use 0 0.45, or if you have a highly modified engine like the one I'm building, 0.55 for a highly modified one. If you have a supercharger or a turbo on your engine, you're going to use 0 0.5 to 0 0.65. You have some mods on it, so it's going to be almost a, a real, real high performance engine. And those are the numbers you're going to use for factors. We're going to go to a formula next here. And then you want to determine your duty cycle. Now the duty cycle is the percent open versus the percent closed. How much time? How much time is it open versus how much time it's closed? Now for your standard OEM engine that you buy, standard car you buy off the lot, it's going to have a, a duty cycle of roughly 80%, 0 0.8. If you're building a higher performance racing engine, it's going to be a little bit higher, 0.85. That could be a race engine, an off-road engine, a higher performance engine. The, the fuel injector will be open more than it's closed. So you can see, if you go from regular OEM uh, original equipment to a racing, you're going to have a little higher duty cycle, meaning the fuel injector will stay open longer. Next, we're going to use all that information. We're going to go here. Let's determine our injector size. Now, injectors are rated in pounds per hour. And it's a very simple formula. It's the maximum horsepower times your brake specific fuel consumption divided by your number of injectors or number of cylinders times your duty cycle. 500 horsepower is what I cho chose. 0.55 is the multiplier I'm using divided by 8 cylinders and an 85% duty cycle comes out to 275 divided by 6.8 and that equals 40.4 pounds. Now since some of these numbers are an estimation I'm saying 40 pounds is a, is a good number to go on and that's the injector I'm using. This is a 40 pound fuel injector. This is I'm using Excel fuel injectors number 150840. It's a 40 pound injector, 12 volt, 12 ohm injector and they cost about 350 for the set of 8 versus what uh well $43 a piece versus 28 bucks for the smaller ones so they're almost twice the cost or about you now 90% more than just a regular fuel injector. So they're, they're fairly expensive, 43 bucks a piece, but it's really not that bad when you think about it when you have a, a higher performance fuel injector. Now, let's go to the engine. We'll install the fuel injector and I'll talk about the rest of the fuel systems, the fuel rail and the fuel pressure regulator and all of the uh, fuel pump and how it gets back to the tank. Now, as you may recall, I, I made this intake manifold for this engine because I wanted to have a dual quad intake manifold for this this engine and they don't make a dual quad throttle body injected engine for a 351 motor so I had to make this so installing injectors and the injectors is fairly easy uh, and you can put a little I put a little bit of a petroleum jelly around here just to make it easy to install and I'm going to install it with the wiring harness pointing out the wiring harness jack pointing out it's easy just putting it in there and just sliding it in and it's an o-ring so it goes in fairly easy and they swivel around so it's not that difficult you'll also notice I got this this is the bolt down for the fuel rail let me just put the rest of the injectors in here I'll set them in place being as neat as possible and I'll grab my fuel rail the fuel rail I'm using there are two of them and this is the Edelbrock fuel rail and if you'll notice that the holes here, these are the holes that bolt down to hold it to the engine. That's why we have these, these clamps here. These are what hold it down or hold it in place. And then with a little bit of petroleum jelly on the O-rings on top of the injectors, I will take this and line up the injector. Being careful not to scratch it because I had to polish this aluminum fuel rail. And I'm going to bang, push it right down into place. This, in, this fuel rail did not come like this. I had to polish it to make it that shiny. So I like to keep it as clean as possible. So now my fuel rail is in place. And let me talk about the, well, first I'm going to put some bolts in here just to hold this down. And the bolts don't, it's, I'm not trying to yank it down or jam it down. It just has to be held in place because it's going to float. It can float a little bit up and down. And I'm just going to put these bolts in on both sides just to hold it in place. Now since it's a V8 engine, I have one fuel rail on this side, one fuel rail on this side. They have to be put together. You have to have the fuel. The fuel is going to come down one fuel rail from the fuel pump through the fuel regulator, and it has to go to the other side. So I made up this aluminum fuel line and polished it. It's a simple, uh, just an aluminum tube that I swaged the end, uh, or put the ferrule on there and put the, the uh, fitting on here like that. And I can put this on here, and now I'll be able to join these two fuel rails together so the fuel can flow between them. 
Now that both of the fuel rails are joined together with my polished aluminum fuel line there, I come to the back of the fuel rail. Now, this is where the fuel is going to come into the fuel rail right here. It's going to come in like that. So I have to have a pressure gauge because pressure is important for fuel injection. So there's my pressure gauge. And I'm going to come around the back here. And this is the plumbing part that's always very interesting. And you can see here that I have... I have a fitting here, just a fitting here with a, a 45 degree elbow for my pressure gauge. This is where the, so the fuel will come in here, it'll flow around the front of the engine, it'll come to the back, and this is where the fuel pressure will end up. And here is my regulator, my fuel pressure regulator. And this is how it's tied in, right here to the fuel rail. I'll crank that down. But I mounted this here for a reason. Like if you know me, all my videos here, everything's for a reason. So now I have a fuel pressure regulator and what's going to happen is the fuel will come in here, it'll fill up the entire fuel rail, it'll come back here, the pressure regulator will relieve pressure in the fuel system, my hands are black because I polished, polished the aluminum, the fuel pressure will come here, the regulator will regulate the pressure down and it'll come here and it'll return to the fuel tank. Now why is that important and why am I doing that? Why do I want to have it return to the fuel tank? Now, uh, let me see, what did I do with that? Uh that, okay, so remember I said that the, the regular vehicle, like in your car, the fuel system or the fuel injection system is deadhead. The fuel comes in and it stops right in a fuel rail. It doesn't return. When you have fuel in a fuel system like this, even in uh, carburetor engines, which is a very common problem, you get something called vapor lock. Vapor lock is when the fuel is near something like a, the fuel line that comes might come off your fuel pump if you have a mechanical fuel pump going to your carburetor or you run your fuel line too close to your uh, exhaust manifold and it gets too hot. What happens is the gasoline will boil and it turns into a vapor. And when it turns into a vapor, it expands so fast that the vapor gets sucked in the engine and, it, and it's already expanded and when you go to compress it, it can't compress anymore and it locks the engine up. That's what vapor lock is. So what I'm doing here is I want to make sure that I prevent vapor lock in this engine since all this fuel injection is sitting on top of the engine, there is a chance it could get, get hot. Now I prevent vapor lock by having an open system or a return system where the fuel comes in, it goes through, goes through a regulator, comes out the bottom and it's returned to the fuel tank. That helps keep the fuel cool. I won't have to worry about the gasoline boiling, getting too hot, creating vapor lock, and lock, seizing up my engine. If you have vapor lock in your engine, you can throw a rod right through the engine, bend the crank, all kinds of nasty things happen. Basically, you destroy your engine if you have vapor lock. And uh, if you do have vapor lock in, engine, in, in your engine, all you have to do is let it set for 15 minutes and cool down. Eventually, the pressure will bleed off, and you'll be able to start it. So, this, there's a... Let me, let me show you over here. This, this system I have on this, on this engine has a vacuum line on this, on this uh, uh, regulator. And what happens is this vacuum comes from a sensor that's connected to the distributor to control fuel pressure at different RPMs. So it's a vacuum controlled fuel, regula uh, fuel pressure regulator. And now that I have the fuel system all hooked up and, and you see how the pressure goes and how, why, how and why it goes through the system and back to the tank, I'll put the harness on and I'll show you the rest of the fuel injection system and what you'll need to do to get it running. So now with the wiring harness installed, I have the, all the connectors going to specific fuel injectors and the wiring harness, the connectors themselves are numbered. So when you put, this, put, put your fuel injection system in, make sure you wire them to the correct injector in the right firing order because they're going to fire, if they fire at the wrong time, it just simply won't run right at all. Matter of fact, it might not run at all. So just make sure it's in order. And then you have your wiring harness. Now this, this goes, this engine harness goes into the wiring harness which goes back into the vehicle which connects to the ECU or the engine control system. I'm using the Excel DFI system, uh, the engine management system. Uh, and this goes in the vehicle and you have a plug that goes in here for power, one that goes to the engine, the wiring harness so that controls all the, all the vehicle. It also controls the ignition system. I'll talk about ignition systems in the next video. But this is a computer that gets mounted. This is the actually expensive part. This is the, 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 you know, the, the uh, $1,700 part of the fuel injection system. The rest of the fuel rails and the other stuff is only a few hundred bucks. But this is, this is the money part right here. Also with the spark module and all the other stuff, I'll talk about it in the uh, uh, ignition portion in the next video. So that I have that, and I'm also using the the Excel DFI fuel pump. 
this fuel pump is going to get mounted to a frame, but I'm just I have it out because I'm I'm gonna have to take it to the dyno, uh, and it goes to a, a fuel filter. It's good to have a very good fuel filter. You don't want any particulate to get into your fuel system. That it will uh, stick one of the injectors, have it lock open, and uh, ruin the performance of the engine. Potentially ruin an injector. So if you need to know how to choose a fuel pump. Go to the previous video about carburetors and it'll tell you how to choose your fuel pump. Now, closing the thought about vapor lock, usually the fuel pump is back in the fuel tank and they're mounted in the fuel tank. That's done for a lot of reasons. Number one, to keep it quiet because this is quite noisy when it fires up. Number two, it's, it helps with the return to return the fuel in the closed loop system so that the fuel can remain cool, get back to the fuel tank. Okay? so. Most, most cars nowadays, the, uh, the pump, the electric pump is located back in the fuel tank. It's not up on the engine like the mechanical ones are mounted mid, midstream like, like they used to be. Uh, now, that's not to say it doesn't exist, but I'm just saying that's the way it usually happens. So let's wrap this up and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the programming and uh, what you need to do to get your vehicle tuned. Okay, so now the, all the fuel injection system is installed. I have my tie downs are secured, everything's nice and tight, and I'm um, 99% sure none of it's going to leak. The next step is to do the ignition system. Now what I was going to do was, I was going to show you the software that is used to tune the engine. That's something you're probably not going to do yourself, and it's something I don't do myself. I do have it on my computer, I do some fine tuning occasionally, but I leave the, the tuning of the engine and the tuning of the computer to the dyno guy. The, the guy I work with is very good at tuning EFI systems. As a matter of fact, he's the world's expert on propane engines. This guy is incredible on building propane engines. But um, I work with him very closely on the software. So what I'd like to close with is this thought. Through this entire of engine build series, I've been talking about planning. And part of the planning it's not just what you're going to buy and how you want to perform. It's who is going to help you when you get it ready to run. Now, if you're going to just do a um, conversion kit, and let's say you're online and you're just surfing around and you stumble across a, a fuel injection kit for your engine or an upgrade to your engine, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, that's great. You know what? I can get 20% more horsepower and better fuel economy. I'm going to upgrade my, my vehicle. That's great. But you have to make sure that there's either someone around you who knows how to tune that specific kit or somewhere you can send it to get the kit tuned because once you put it in and once you buy it you can't take it out because you don't have anybody to tune it so plan find someone around you or find a shop find a, a, a tuner find somebody and ask them what they are used to tuning what they are proficient with what systems they like to work with because not all tuning systems are compatible with all computers like Apple or, or Windows so it's not all compatible it's not all universal so plan that out make sure you know who's gonna help you what kind of systems they know how to tune what kind of systems are available for your vehicle that you want to install or upgrade and can they do it if you do it and you put it in there you could be terribly disappointed and that's the last thing you want you don't want to be disappointed when you install something you turn it on and either lack of ability to do it or lack of tools to tune it you're going to be very disappointed and you can for this fuel in, fuel injection system the fuel injection system in here we're talking about close to 2500 almost three grand for this system if i put in the distributor the dual sync distributor the timing system the computer the ignition module all stuff to go with it we're talking close to four thousand dollars and if you don't have someone you can work with that could be four thousand dollars down the toilet instead of four thousand dollars well spent so before I put the system in, I talked to the guy, I found out what he's used to, and, and they're very, very complex. There's air fuel maps, there's pressure maps, there's all kind of sensor maps that they have to know how to tune. It's not that easy. So work with that person, find out how you can do it. The people involved with making your engine build or your upgrade a success are just as critical as the components that you buy. People and parts equal success. You can't do it all by yourself. I don't do it all by myself. And there are shops out there that all they do is tune engines. That's all they do. They're experts at tuning. It takes a lot of, a lot of experience and a lot of practice to be good at that. So plan that out. I hope that covered fuel injection for you. The last, uh, well, getting out to the last couple sections of getting this engine running. Next section we'll do, we'll do ignition systems. Then I'll talk about overall breathing of the engine. 
And uh, I don't know, come if I need anything else, we'll, we'll talk about that. But then we're getting to take it to the dyno. We'll put it on there and we'll see how this whole thing performs. I appreciate all your comments, your text messages. It's great. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, keep up the great work. I love seeing your projects. Really, you guys built some awesome stuff. You guys in Australia, you guys are awesome. Really, I really appreciate it. Uh, keep the text coming. Keep the comments coming, and I have something special coming up in the next uh, week or two. So you're going to get a, if you're one of my subscribers, you're going to get a message, and you're going to see some interesting things I have for uh, some of my subscribers. So stay tuned. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.